listen to the CBA Leaders Podcast, a resource provided for ministry leaders serving churches and the Chilton Baptist Association. Our association exists to strengthen and connect churches to complete the Great Commission. The goal of this podcast is to provide news and announcements related to associational ministries and to provide helpful content to encourage you in your ministry leadership as you serve to make disciples of Jesus in Chilton County and beyond. Thanks again for listening. Let's jump into this week's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of, or I say Monday episode. It's going to take me a while to break that habit. Uh, Feel free to laugh at my expense. But now that we're doing two episodes each week, um, it's uh, going to take me a while to break the habit of talking about a weekly episode uh, since we're doing more than one now. so But excited about this week and the topic that I want to talk to you about, uh, one that I think is really relevant for uh, for anyone serving in the life of the church, and even for you yourself. Maybe, maybe you are listening to this podcast and you might not view yourself as uh, a leader per se, or uh, somebody who is uh, you know, in a position where you're influencing the direction of, of, of a church or a congregation or whatever, but I think the topic that I want to talk to you about today will be helpful just for you as an individual believer uh, in discerning maybe uh, your role in the local church and and where God would have you to serve. And so uh, we're going to change the format of the podcast a little bit too from what we've done in the past. Uh, In the past, we've kind of done the announcements on the front end. I'm going to save those. Uh, for the back end and jump right into the content each week. And so hang on to the end or fast forward to the end if you get bored with the content and uh, jump to the announcements at the end. But but what I want to talk about on this this Monday episode of the podcast is what I call the four C's of church staffing. And uh, I've said church staffing here, but again, you could use these four C's for not just staff positions, but for volunteer positions in the in in the church right so uh, this could really be expanded to much more than just thinking about a church staff position and some of what i'm going to share with you in this episode is stuff that i share regularly with pastor search committees that reach out to me and ask me to uh, to help them in their process of looking for their next pastor uh, if that is uh, something that your church finds itself uh, in the midst of, and I'd love to come alongside. I, I try not to butt in uh, to our churches, uh, but if I'm invited in, I love to come in and talk about this um, and do a little training for a search committee. So, but this is some of the content that I would present uh, in a little bit longer form to uh, a search committee that's looking for their next pastor. So, but I call it the the four C's of of church staffing because we're you know we're Baptists, so we got to alliterate everything. Okay, so uh, the four C's and the the first of those four C's would be character, right? And to me, the the order of of these you'll notice I think is important. Um, character being the first. And the most important quality to look at when you're thinking about someone serving either on a church staff as a pastor or a staff member, or even, again, I would say this applies to someone serving in a position of leadership, maybe as a volunteer of a ministry team in your church or or something to, similar to that, right? Character is so important, so important. And, and sometimes what I think we do is we we if someone is very gifted or um you know they they have some great maybe fruitfulness that they can point to in their ministry but their character is uh you know not stellar then sometimes people will turn a blind eye to the character deficiencies in order to put a person in a position of of leadership potentially um and so it, it, it's a temptation, but character is incredibly important. Matter of fact, if you look at in the New Testament, if you look at those passages and pastoral epistles that talk about the, the qualifications for an elder or qualifications for a deacon in the church, guess what? If you pay really careful attention there, you'll notice that, that most of the majority of those Qualifications that are listed are character qualifications. They're about the type of person that an individual is, 
not about their gifting or other things, right? So character, in my estimation, is foundational. And the question we're looking at with this is, does this individual demonstrate a godly character that's expected of someone serving in Christian leadership? Is this, do they have this kind of character? So the way you discover this is by calling people's references. And um, you'd be shocked, I'm sure, uh, maybe you're not, to find out that a lot of a search committee sometimes don't go through the, the work of contacting references. I have been called to serve at churches before and gone back and asked my references, hey, did anybody from this church call you? And they've said, no, I never got a phone call. So I've been called myself to serve as a pastor before and never never had one of my references contacted. So, so consider the individual's character. Again, this is staff or could be a volunteer leadership role in your church. Secondly is calling. Um, character and then calling. Does the individual have the ability to articulate a calling? And I, I should put in here a calling from God to this particular ministry for which they are being considered. So you want to make sure that a person is not stepping into a role of leadership on staff or as a volunteer leader in your church just because somebody else may have pressured them into it or because uh, their mama always wanted them to be a preacher or, you know, whatever. You want you want them to be able to articulate clearly, I have a sense that God is calling me to this, to this, this ministry. Um, so calling is important. Calling is what will keep somebody in that role when it gets difficult. And if a person does not have a strong sense of calling, then they tend to usually lack longevity in whatever particular role that they're called to. So character calling and then competency. Competency, the third C, uh, is does this individual have a record, a track record of demonstrating competency in the area of ministry for which they are being considered. Now, let me say a word about this. Um, competency is not proven necessarily by degrees. I'll say that again. Competency is not necessarily proven by degrees or diplomas. So it is possible for a person to have a lot of degrees and diplomas, but not have competency in a particular area of ministry, right? Um, it, say it this way. I could watch the Tour de France and, you know, listen to the commentators and, um, you know, and, and then go and potentially talk to you about it. And you might think, man, this guy has spent some time on a bicycle, right? Um, but it could be that I've never ridden a bicycle before in my life, but I can tell you all about a bicycle because I've listened to other people talk about what it, you know, riding a bicycle in the Tour de France. And I can tell you about all the issues and the, the strategy and the things you need to do if you're in this bicycle race. So I can, I can sound like I might be competent in, in this topic, but the reality is I don't. And sometimes a person might have degrees on the wall, diplomas on the wall, which shows you they've studied the topic, but it doesn't necessarily prove that they have a demonstrated competency in a particular ministry field. And so I, I want to ask questions to see, has this person demonstrated a particular gifting and competency in the past to do what we're considering for them to do in the future. So uh, character, calling, competency, and then lastly, and oftentimes one that is neglected is what I call chemistry. So what do I mean by chemistry? What I mean is, does the individual being considered, do they have a personality? Do they have a gift mix? Do they have um, a leadership style? There's a lot of different ways we could say this, but uh, and this is kind of an intangible almost like you can you can sense it and feel it sometimes, but it's hard to kind of put your finger on. But does the individual have a personality that is a good match with the congregation or potentially with other other staff members or both? Right. Because I've seen it happen before where this wasn't really considered or it was kind of mismatched. 
And you had, a, a you know, as I say, a pastor and a congregation that maybe had uh, not the greatest relationship or they had conflict that potentially led to that pastor moving on from from his role of serving in that church. And it wasn't that the congregation was a horrible congregation and it wasn't that the pastor was a horrible pastor, but their personalities were just not, it just wasn't a good mix, you know, was not a good mix. The chemistry wasn't there uh, between those two. And you could take that same congregation and a different pastor and everything be fine. Or you could take that pastor and you put him in a different congregation and all of a sudden everything's fine. So this chemistry is one that I feel like is oftentimes neglected and forgotten about when considering church staffing or volunteer uh, leadership in the church. So these four are really, really helpful to think through. And, And just as a side note here, if you are on a search committee or you're looking for church staffing, I actually have a document that we've put together uh, here in the association office that I can send to you that actually has interview questions under each of these kind of uh, qualities, these C's. So you can kind of ask particular questions to help you discern character, ask questions to help you discern calling, ask questions to help you discern demonstrated competency in the past and chemistry, all those things. So um, if you want that, just reach out to me here at the office and be happy to get it to you. So these four are really important. And where it gets interesting is um, let's consider, okay, what if a person has, let's say, a really strong character, but they don't necessarily yet have a strong calling of where they might feel called in ministry And as a result, you know, they got strong character, but maybe they don't have much demonstrated competency. Um, This might be somebody that's kind of a a newer believer or somebody who maybe they've been a believer for a long time. They got strong character, but they've never really served in the life of the church before. So they don't know what they really feel called to or what demonstrated competencies do they have. And uh, so they're but they're a person of strong character. Well, what does this person need? Well, they need they need the opportunities. They need volunteer opportunities to serve, to kind of test the waters. They need some mentoring and discipleship to help them potentially discern their spiritual gifting. Right. So, um, so, but to say this, a, a person can have great character, but if they don't have calling and they don't have demonstrated competency, competency, the right move is not to put them in a situation. Uh, where they're on a church staff just because they're a, a good good fella, right? Just because they're a good person. Uh, we want to be careful because uh, a person of strong character, uh, if you put them in, in a position on staff and leadership, uh, it can it can do damage to them, right? It can do damage to that person. So, so character. Uh, if a person has character but not the other C's, that we could identify yet, then we want to mentor and disciple and help them discern what their gifting and calling is for ministry in the life of the church. What if a person has calling, but maybe it's question marks on their character and they don't really have demonstrated competency yet or chemistry, but what if they've got calling and they say, man, I just really feel like God is calling me to, to be a pastor or to be, to do student ministry or to, to you name it, whatever you fill in the blank, a person has a sense of calling. What do we do with them when there may not be demonstrated character yet, or maybe there's some rough edges of their character? Well, similar to a person that has a uh, high character, but, but lower calling, this person needs mentoring and discipleship. They need to be walking in a close relationship with someone who can help them discern and work on their character, strengthen their character. And, um, just because, I guess I'd say a caution at this point, just because a person says God has called me to this does not mean any church is obligated to give them, you know, the, the reins to, to a ministry in their church, right? You, you, They need to have some other things in place in order to step into a role of, of being on church staff or being in leadership in the church. Um, so calling. What if a person has uh, competency, but no character or low character and not a strong sense of calling? The This one is one where I would say caution, 
caution, caution, caution. Uh, this one, I think, in my opinion, somebody who has a high competency, but maybe not the strongest character, maybe not the strongest calling, and they also lack chemistry, the great temptation, because these people are so competent in whatever area they're, they are, have this, this competency in, because they're so competent, people will put them in positions of leadership, and it can be incredibly destructive in the life of the church because these are the type of people who will split a church. These are the type of people who will leave a congregation and take a whole bunch of people with them because they get upset or mad about something uh, because other people don't let them you know, do something they want to do, right? That These people are the ones that can really wreck a church. Uh, people of high competency, but low character, low calling, and not a good chemistry or match with the other people. But sometimes people that might check this box and be really competent are the ones who are the most sought after by churches because they can get some stuff done in the short term. They can they can get you results, right? Because they're highly competent in a particular area. And so really be careful about this, right? We want people to have demonstrated competency, right? We want that. But if they lack character and they and they lack a clear calling, run right <laughs> run from people who fit this category maybe that's not, maybe that's overstating things a little bit don't run from them but be cautious and you want to develop them disciple them uh, to have the character they need and uh, to understand their calling so that they can be effective uh, in ministry and use the competency that God has given them so what about a person who has chemistry but they don't really have demonstrated competency they don't really have a strong sense of calling uh, or maybe they do, um, and their character maybe, you know, maybe it's there, maybe it's not, I don't know. But sometimes people with this chemistry component, I'll say this, this is another one to be kind of cautious about. Um, chemistry would be, let me give you an example. Um, oh, you know what? He His sermon his sermon was okay. He came to preach in view of a call. His sermon was okay, but man, he's got the cutest family. His wife seems so sweet. Man, they just seem like such nice people, right? Um, that would be an example of maybe chemistry, but but the other ones are kind of lacking. And I can guarantee you, there's been a lot of churches who have hired pastors uh, because he had because he was a, a cute family, had a cute family, right? Or he was a nice guy. He just seemed real nice, especially if they maybe in their former their former pastor or former leader was the opposite then they'll swerve over in the other uh, other side to a person that's just really nice, has great people skills, whatever, but doesn't really have demonstrated competency or some of the other things that you would want to be looking for, right? So there's a lot of different ways we can look at this. Um, you know, here's another example. What if you got somebody with great character, strong character? They got great calling. They can clearly articulate a calling to the ministry for which they're being considered. They've got good chemistry they got good people skills they they know how to interact well with the people of your congregation and with your staff but let's say they're missing the competency part that third c they don't have competency that they can point to in their track record and in the past and say hey yeah here's where i've done this in the past and here's where you can see fruitfulness in my uh, my life and ministry uh, example of a person who might fit this category would be somebody who is uh, recently graduated maybe from seminary and they're looking for their first first church to serve as a pastor, right? As so I say this, um, some churches got to take some chances on guys like that. I look back with such fondness on uh, Siam Baptist Church in Elizabethton, Tennessee, right? Because while I didn't totally lack demonstrated competency, I had never been a pastor before. Right. I'd been a missionary. I'd been a church planner. I'd been a youth minister, I, you know, had done some things in ministry before. So I wasn't totally blank on demonstrated competency, but I had never been a pastor before of a church. And Siam Baptist Church said, you know what? We're going to call this guy to be our pastor. And they loved me. They encouraged me. They uh, they I learned some lessons there as my first 
uh, pastor it, you know. So, man, there I really love churches that are willing to take a risk, a little bit of a risk, on somebody that has good character, a strong calling, and good chemistry, but maybe they're just starting out, and somebody's got to give them an opportunity, right? So, so anyway, these four C's, I hope that they're helpful for you. Just to recap really quickly, these four C's of character, calling, competency, and chemistry. Um, these are four things to consider as you think about, you know, exactly where you maybe as an individual should be serving in ministry. Um, these are things to consider uh, for your church, for yourself, as you think about hiring staff, bringing in staff members. Uh, if you're on a search committee, things to think about for uh, your next pastor. So hopefully these four C's are helpful to you. They're, they really, really are beneficial to me. If I just had a short session with a search committee or somebody that's looking for to fill a staff position, these are the four things that I'm going to immediately because I think they're incredibly helpful in, in having a discussion about the right kind of person to come in and serve uh, in, in your church. So a couple of announcements before we, we go. Um, first, is uh, MTI, next class of MTI is starting on Tuesday, tomorrow night. Uh, that'll be starting. And so not too late for anyone that you know that might be interested or you yourself to come and be involved with MTI, our, our class uh, that's coming up here that we're about to start. It's going to be on the doctrine of prayer. I'll be teaching that class. Uh, missional prayer, as I heard one person say it, uh, missional prayer is the most underutilized resource in the church today. And so prayer is important, and it's the most underutilized resource in most churches today that God has given us to see Him move in great power and reach people. Uh, and so we want to want to learn about prayer. We're going to do that for eight weeks. So the cost of the class is fifty dollars. Uh, you can reach out to us here in the office if you have any more questions, or give us a call about how to register, or just show up on Tuesday night at six o'clock here at the association office, and we'll get you registered and signed up while you're here. Uh, in person. Also, coming up on April 1st will be our next Lunch and Learn opportunity, and I'm really excited about the fact that we're going to have Jamie Work, who is going to be here with us on that day. Uh, Jamie is with the IMB, and uh, Jamie uh, is just, I really love uh, Jamie. It's been a blessing to get to know him here recently, been in some meetings with him with some other associational leaders and uh, just have learned a lot from him and about what the IMB is doing. And um, he, he is definitely, going back to our four C's, he's a guy that I view as having great character and uh, calling and competency in chemistry. He's, he's, he's an awesome uh, guy. You'll be blessed. He's got a lot of background in serving as a pastor of churches. He served as an international mission board missionary. He has uh, just done a lot of great things. And uh, most recent congregation that he served uh, saw 50 people sent out from their congregation to go and serve on the international mission field. And they saw more than 100 people from the church participate in short-term mission projects in the U.S. and around the globe. So uh, he knows uh, and has experienced uh, mobilization within the life of a local church. And so I'm excited about having uh, Dr. Work with us. And uh, we do need you to RSVP as usual for this event. So we'll, we'll provide lunch for you free of charge. Um, and the event is free, but we do need you to RSVP just so that we know that you're going to be here and, um, and we can have the right amount of food for everybody. So to RSVP for that, as always, you can either email us here in the office at ChiltonBaptist at gmail.com or give us a call 205-755-3188 or you can go to uh, the association website, the events page, ChiltonBaptist.online forward slash events. And at the very top there, you'll see a description with a little bio for Dr. Work. And then you'll see below that a place that you can type in an RSVP there and we'll get that information and have your RSVP ready for you. There, so I hope you'll join us on uh, that that day, April Fool's Day, <laughs> on April April Fool's Day, April first. But be here with us, uh, and we're going to have a great time of fellowship and equipping and a good meal together. So I hope you'll be there with us. So, as always, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode or this Monday episode 
of the podcast. Uh, as always, if you uh, have appreciated this content, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff, you know what to do. But thank you for your support uh, of the work that we do through the association. We're here to serve you and uh, hopefully to encourage you and what God has called you to do in your your ministry in the life of uh, the local church. So God bless you, and we will see you on the next episode of the CBA Leaders Podcast.